In this video, we're going to take a look at informally analyzing the binary search and the linear search algorithms. And the reason why I say we're going to do an informal analysis is because algorithm analysis is this whole area of computer science that deals with determining the amount of time or the amount of memory, the amount of storage required to execute uh, some particular algorithm. And associated with that is a lot of formalism. And I don't want to really get into the formalisms in this particular video. But I will say that th there's two main methods for going about doing algorithm analysis. Uh, one is an empirical way. So we could go about uh, timing how long it takes us to execute a particular algorithm on a particular computer system. Or we could maybe count up the number of operations. So the number of comparisons, the number of additions, the number of uh, multiplication operations. So each one of those would have a cost associated with it. But with empirical analysis, we do have this drawback that is dependent upon the, the speed of a particular machine. So if we were to run the same algorithm on a different machine that was you know, twice as fast or had twice as much memory, we may get very different results. And the same thing goes with the programming language we use. So if we were to move from one programming language to another programming language, then the number of operations, you know, the number of additions, the number of comparisons, the number of multiplication operations may be very different. Uh, so that's really the drawback there with the empirical analysis. You really want to be comparing apples to apples and not have uh, some sort of um, dependency there depending on what computer system or what programming language you're using. So with the analytical method, you really don't have those drawbacks. And, and with the analytical approach, we're looking at maybe uh, picking out a particular operation that maybe dominates the algorithm and finding out how many times that particular operation is executed. Uh, and we really don't even need to know the, the count precisely of how many times a dominant operation execute, executes. We can just express it as a function of the input size. So take, for instance, the linear search. We know in, the, in that case, the comparison is really the dominant operation that's going on. And it may be the case that we have to compare every single element in that array before we find the thing that we're looking for. So we can see in that case that it does change depending on how many elements we have to search through. So if we only had 10 elements, we only had to do 10 potential comparisons. If we had 100 elements, we'd have to do 100 comparisons. So the number of comparisons there is growing linearly, as the name indicates, uh, with the number of elements. Whereas binary search was very different. We were able to cut our search space in half, and we said that this cutting in half uh, function was the, the logarithmic function. So we said that it grows uh, logarithmically. So if we think about having a 100 element array and using binary search, we're able to cut our search space in half on that very first comparison. So to go from 100 elements to 50 elements to 25 to 12 and so on down the line. Of course, we should say that you know, with binary search, we have to have a sorted array, whereas with linear search, we don't have to have I uh, sorted array. So what I want to do now is go over to Eclipse and do a basic comparison between our linear search algorithm and our binary search algorithm just so we can get a feel for really the, the difference in the amount of work that's going on uh, between these two algorithms. So let's go over there and do that. Okay, so I'm over in Eclipse now and I've already created a project and I've also created a CPP file called linear versus binary. And I've pasted in our linear search uh, function and also our binary search function and made a few changes. So the, the changes that I've made is, is basically related to uh, keeping track of the number of comparisons that are going on. So I have this count variable here initialized to zero. And inside this for loop here, I just simply increment that count variable each time we do a comparison. And if it turns out that the value that we're searching for is equal to a particular array elements value, then we'll break out of our for loop and simply uh, output to the user the number of comparisons that took place. Now, it could be the case that we never actually enter into this if statement here and break out of the for loop. So I don't know if I've used the, the break statement before in previous videos, but that's just the keyword in, in C++ that allows us to break out of some structure based off of some condition. So it's what it's saying here is we're going to break out of this looping structure based off of this if statement being true. So it may be the case that we exhaust this entire for loop before we output uh, the number of comparisons. But that's still you know, information that we would like to know because we are wanting to keep track of that because the, the number of comparisons really is the, the overriding operation that's going on there with linear search. Now with binary search, we have something similar going on. We still have this variable called count. 
And then we have this looping structure again. Of course, with the binary search, we have a lot more going on inside the looping structure. Uh, so some of you may be saying, well, you know, you're only incrementing here the, the count associated with this comparison operation, but you really have, you know, this update of mid, so we have to, you know, do an addition and then a division operation. So there is, you know, additional work associated with binary search on each iteration. But again, the, the main thing that's going on is we have to iterate through this code some number of times. Again, the, the amount of work is some constant amount more on each iteration, uh, more than the linear search. But again, it's this very small constant amount, so it's really quite minuscule in comparison to the overall number of iterations that we have to do uh, for linear search in comparison to binary search. But it's the same idea. As soon as we uh, find our search value, our search value is equal to a particular array elements value, then we'll break out of this looping structure and output uh, the number of comparisons uh, that took place. The other functions that we have, or the other function besides the main function, is this populate array function. And that just simply populates our array with some values. It just populates the array with the values of 1 up to our size. So a very simple function there. And then down here in main, we have a do while loop in which we simply ask the user to enter in an int for the size of the array. We create an array, and then we ask the user to enter in an integer value between 1 and the size to search for in the array and then we call our populate array, then we call linear search, then we call binary search, and then we ask the user uh, if they would like to run this again. Uh, the only other thing that's kind of new here is the sync function. So the sync function uh, basically just uh, clears out our buffer. So if there's any unread characters uh, that we have in our buffer, it clears that out before we call this get function, which the get function will just simply get a character uh, from the console there. So that's what's going on there in the main function. So let's go ahead and uh, compile or build this. So we're compiling and linking this program. Everything should compile and leak fine. And now we'll run it. And so we'll uh, start here fairly small. So it asks for us to enter in a size. So I'll say we have a 100 element array and we'll search for maybe the value of 95. So you can see here with the linear search, we had 95 comparisons. In comparison to binary search, we only had six comparisons. And you can see that this uh, disparity between the number of comparisons is going to grow as we increase the, the size of our array. So let's go ahead and uh, run this again. So we'll say, we'll say, type in Y here and run it again. And we'll say that we'll do maybe a 5,000 element array. And we'll search for maybe 4,785. So again, the linear search, as we expect, growing linearly, whereas with binary search, we discuss how it has logarithmic growth. So we're cutting that search space in half, and we only did eight comparisons for binary search before we found the value that we were looking for. Uh, let me run it again. So we'll do Y here to run again, and this time we'll do maybe 100,000 element array, and this time we'll search for I don't know, uh, 97,845. And you can see there that we went uh, from our previous time when we were doing 5,000 elements, we only did eight comparisons for binary search. This time we went up to 100,000. So, you know, a pretty big change there. And we only had to do 16 comparisons. Linear search, 97,845. So you can see the, the difference there. And let me just show you that um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, quit this particular program and go back and, and change up our code. So even if we were to go in here and change up our count here, so instead of doing count plus plus, maybe we do count uh, plus equal three. We'll say that it's uh, three times as, as costly for binary search in comparison to linear search. So I'm going to say, I'm going to change this up too. So we'll say uh, linear search, we'll say linear search cost and we'll say uh, binary search uh, cost, for lack of a better term, because it's really no longer just counting the number of comparisons. We're just trying to illustrate that maybe on each iteration is three times more expensive for binary search as it is for linear search. And I don't even know if that's the case, but just to show you that um, that, that really isn't a huge factor, I'm going to go ahead and build this and, and run it again. So you'll see that that is a bigger factor with maybe some of our smaller values. So if we had only a 100 element array and we were searching for the value of 95, 
we can see, oh yeah, linear search, still 95 comparisons, binary search, we had to do our 95 is the cost, uh, which in that case would be 95 comparisons, whereas binary search, uh, we have a cost of 18, so that would be the number of comparisons plus, you know, calculating the midpoint and maybe doing uh, some other additional comparisons as well. But if you run this again, so let me do a Y here and run it uh, and do maybe 100,000. So we'll do 100,000 here and then do a search for, I don't know, 94,623. And you can see that we, we have very slow growth, even though we're doing three times the cost amount on each iteration for, for binary search. So you can see the big difference there. The other thing that we should state again is that with binary search, we do have to have a sorted array in comparison to linear search. It doesn't require us to have a sorted array. And there is a cost associated with sorting something. So, you know, whether you should use linear search or binary search, it really depends. You know, it depends on how many times are you going to be performing the search. If it's only one time and maybe the array is not that large, then linear search may make sense. If you're going to be doing a lot of times, then it may make sense to go ahead and sort the array and incur that cost so that you're not having to uh, search through every potential element of the array to find the thing in comparison to the binary search where you're actually cutting the search space in half. The, the last thing that I wanted to show you guys before I end this video is just a, a plot comparing uh, linear search to binary search. So if we look at this plot here, you can see that we have our linear search here in this orange and we have binary search here in the blue. And I only did it for um, you know, a very small number of elements here. So this starts out with uh, two here and goes all the way to 32. So I was doubling the number of elements for the plots here. So it goes two, four, eight, 16, and then 32. So you can see here in blue, uh, with, with binary search, even though we're doubling our search space, so doubling the number of elements, we only have to do one more comparison. So here we only had to do uh, one comparison here if we only had two elements, whereas if we went from two elements to four elements, we only had to do uh, two comparisons in that particular case. So we went from one comparison uh, to two comparisons. So here on the, the y-axis here, we have the number of comparisons. But you can see here with linear search, we went from uh, two to four. We had to go from two comparisons uh, to four comparisons there. So you can see that every single time that we're doubling, we're also doubling the uh, number of comparisons that are going on. That is not the case with, uh, with linear, uh, excuse me, with binary search. We have this very slow logarithmic growth and you would even see more of a drastic comparison there if I selected larger values. Of course, it would start uh, looking like the uh, logarithmic growth was almost flat in comparison to the, the linear growth. All right, so that's it for this video. Hopefully you have a better sense of, of what's going on in terms of the amount of work with uh, binary search and linear search. So that's it for this video.